If you have a printer that does not have a network interface and you want to share this printer on your home network so that everyone that is connected to your home network can use it and can print to it, keep on watching this video because I'm gonna show you the most cost effective way to achieve this. So in my video, I'm gonna show you what you need to achieve this hardware wise and software wise. And believe me, it is really very cheap. And also I'm gonna show you how to set up everything, how to share the printer, how to connect to it, and we're gonna be testing everything. So let's start first by showing you what you need to achieve this. Hardware wise, you need a mini PC like this Zima Blade server. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this Zima Blade server. This is an affiliate link. If you make a purchase using my link, I'll make a small percentage at no cost to you, and this will support my channel. Also, you need a Linux operating system with Docker support, and the Zima Blade server comes pre-installed with Casa OS, that has natively Docker support. We need also to download and install the CUPS software from Docker Hub, and we need to set it up. So let me first show you how to connect the Zima Blade server to your network and to your printer, and we're gonna switch to screen recording to show you how to set up everything. These are the three connections you need to make to the Zima Blade server. This is the power which is USB-C, this is USB-A cable that is connected to the printer, and this is a network cable that is connected to the router. So here on the side of the Zima Blade server, we have these connections. Let's start with the network. And then this is USB-A for the printer. And then this is the USB-C for the power. When the Zima Blade starts, it creates an entry in DNS called casaos.local. So we need to access casaos.local from any web browser to start setting up the Zima Blade and the CUPS server. So I'm going to switch to screen recording. So here I'm going to open my web browser and then put in the address bar casaos.local and hit enter. And if it is the first time that you access the Zima Blade, it will here simply ask you to create a new user. So here I already created a user. I'm gonna log in with this user. And this is a setup screen of Casa OS. Here we need to install a new application and we need to go to Docker Hub so for us to get this application. So open a new tab and go to hub.docker.com and here search in the Docker Hub for CUPS. CUPS and we're gonna install the one that is from Anuj Datar and it has more than 50,000 installation and why I chose this one this is because it has a Docker container so it is configured with the Docker Composer instructions so I'll click on it and scroll until you find Docker Compose so this is Docker Compose you need to copy these instructions so if you hover over it there's a copy button here just click on it and you will copy it and let's switch back to Casa OS. And here you need to click on the plus sign here on the right. So to create a new application and choose install a customized application. And in the application settings, click on the import button here and then paste the Docker Compose instructions. And then click on submit. So it will give you a warning to populate this information. Click on OK and I'm going to show you how to populate everything. So let me walk you through what you need to fill in here. Under tag, you can put anything. I'm gonna put latest here for the latest version. And then under title here, you need to name your application. I'm gonna name it simply CUPS. And under icon URL, you can leave it as it is. Under web UI, you need to add the port 631 here. This is a default port for CUPS server. And for the network, do not touch it. And ports also do not touch them. Under volumes, under host, you need to put a path where the CUP server will save its configuration files. So I'm going to put it under home slash CUPS. So it's going to create a folder called CUPS under home. And for the container, leave it as it is. Now for the user and the password, by default, the one that created this CUPS installation put Batman and Batcave password. So here, change them, put something significant to you. So here I'm going to put KST in the username. So this is the administrator and I'm going to put a password. Of course here, put a password that it is strong for the purpose of this video. I put any password and under the time zone, of course, it's not Gotham. So <laughs> put the time zone that you're in. For me, it is in New York. So new underscore York and here leave everything by default. Scroll 
for the memory limit, you don't have to give it like all the memory that you have. So on my Zima Blade server, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm gonna reduce it to eight gigabytes of RAM only. CPU shares, I'm gonna leave it as it is. Restart policy also, do not touch it. And also do not touch anything else. So this is everything you need to fill in. And now click on install. And the installation will start. It shouldn't take long. So here's the installation completed and this is the CAPS server installed. So now that CAPS is installed, we need to restart the Zima blade so that for it to detect the printer. Make sure that the printer is turned on and it is connected to the Zima blade server. So let's click on the settings here and then click on restart. And yes for are you sure? And it takes a minute to restart. So here it restarted. Let's log back in and see the CAPS server restarted automatically. So now what we need to do is we need to create this printer, which is a Lexmark MX310 printer for me, and we need to share it on the network. So let's start CAPS. We're gonna go to administration, so for us to create the printer. So let's click on administration. And here you need to log in with the username and password that you put in the configuration file. So remember I have put KST, and then I put password one, two, three. So click on sign in after you put the information and then click on find the new printers and the CAP server should detect the Lexmark printer. And here it is. So click on add to printer next to Lexmark or of course the printer that you're adding and you need to name it. So here it gave it the default name. It's too long for me. So I'm gonna remove everything after Lexmark and I'm gonna leave it at Lexmark. And this is important because this is the share name. I'm gonna show you how to use it afterwards. For description and location, it is okay. And make sure to check share this printer so that this printer will be available on your home network. So I'm gonna click in the box here to check it and then click on continue. Here you need to select the make of the printer. So it is Lexmark. So I'm gonna scroll, it is by alphabetical order and then select Lexmark and then click on continue. It will ask you now to choose the model of the printer. So I'm gonna choose the model of my printer, which is Lexmark MX310. And here it is, I'm gonna choose this one, which is MX310 series and then click on add printer. And now the printer will be added. We still need to set the default options for the printer. So click on set printer options and here choose the media size. For me, it is letter, so I'm gonna choose letter and the media source, it is tray one. So here simply, I'm gonna click on set default options. And if we go back to administration, we're gonna see the printer here. The next step in the setup now is that I'm gonna show you how to connect a Windows PC that is on your home network to this printer that is now a network printer. And we're gonna print a page from the Windows PC to this printer to make sure that the configuration is successful. So this is the Windows PC that we're gonna use as a test PC and we're gonna connect the printer. So we need to go to devices. So go to settings on your Windows PC and then click on Bluetooth and devices, click on printers and scanners, and then click on add device. Give it a moment. So here it will search for devices and it will come back and it will tell you that it didn't find anything. So it will give you the option to add it manually. Click on add manually. And here you need to select add the printer using an IP address or host name. So select it and then click on next. And you need to keep it on IPP device. And under host name, you need to put this HTTP column slash slash. And here you put the casa OS dot local DNS name. So casa OS dot local. If you know the IP also of your casa OS server, you can put it here as long as the IP is a fixed IP, so it will not change in the future. So here you need to put after it column 631, and this is the port that will redirect all the requests to Casa OS to the printer, and then slash printers, and then slash, and here you need to put the share name, and remember we renamed the printer Lexmark. So put Lexmark, and this is all you need to put here. So now click on next, and the printer will be added to Windows. And here's a message telling us that the printer was added successfully to Windows. And it's also giving us the option to print a test page. So I'm gonna click on print test page and we're gonna see that the test will be successful. So I'm gonna switch now to the printer. And here's the printer printing the test page. So this is a test page printed from the Windows PC.
If you have any questions or comments or you need to know something about the Zima Blade or Casa OS or also CAPS, don't hesitate to put all your comments and questions in the comments section below and I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions and all your comments. I hope that you liked my video and you found it useful. In case you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you on the next video.